Hello, genealogists. This is Craig, and this is Just Genealogy. And today we're going to wrap up the identity triangulation model, or aka the peso dance. And we're going to talk about origins, and we're going to talk about what else you need to do in order to accomplish this stuff at this st stage of the process. So the first thing you want to be sure is relating to origin or origins. You want to make sure that the individual that you think you have actually migrated the way you think he migrated. And the way that you verify that is by seeing who else he migrated with. Now, admittedly, some men are going to migrate by themselves. But generally, people migrate in groups to places. They have a specific destination in mind, and that's where they go. So you want to try to figure out who's moving with who where. And you should have probably already done this because how did those associates get with your guy where they are today? Now, remember, we sometimes are doing this sort of a reverse in that all the people in the county they came from came from this county. Well, not all of them, but you know what I mean. Remember, that we're working our way backwards. So these people are actually moving towards you. So, so they existed in the county that you came from and now they exist in the county that you're at. So therefore they must have migrated either together or soon after your individual migrate. So you wanna pay attention to migrations and who people migrate with. Who you migrate with is again, part of that model from the perspective of making somebody different than anybody else because people diff migrate with different people. In other words, a migration of members of a Methodist church are gonna be different than migrations of members of a monthly meeting, or are they? Because remember in the absence of a monthly meeting, would a Quaker generally become? Methodist. They don't make good Presbyterians, they make very good Methodists. So you want to, it could be that the Quakers moved together and they moved with Methodists because there was some kinship and then the monthly meeting didn't work out and they're all Methodists or vice versa. It's hardly likely to be vice versa though. So you want to know who, who people migrate with because they are associates, because they are family. And this will help you differentiate your John Smith from the other John Smith who did not migrate with your family, who did not migrate with your associates, but migrated with a different family and a different set of associates. You want to make sure that you have the migration of your individual down. Recognize that there is the issue is most people don't buy land the minute they hit the ground in a new county. So if you're looking farther back, you know, don't, you know, in coming out of that county, you may find them in a county and then they moved to another county. I have that wrong. You have them in a county, but you think they moved from that previous county like five years different than it was because they didn't buy land until five years after they got to that county, if that makes any sense. I may have to cover that again somewhere, some other way in order to make it clear. One of the things you want to do as part of this process is you want to play devil's advocate a lot because after all, after you do your proof, everybody else is going to play, you know, you must have made a mistake and here's where you made your mistake. So pretend that you're looking for this clown's mistake. Not that you're a clown, but you want to believe that you're a clown and that you make mistakes. And therefore you want to find out where those mistakes are. You want to focus your research rather than shotgun it. And lots of people, too many people shotgun their research and they don't focus on a specific piece of information that they want to look at and they want to deal with, and they want to prove. You don't want to put a record on that dress or in that model until you're confident that it actually belongs to that person. 
If it, you're not confident it belongs to that person, create another person. Recognize that other person may not exist in real life, but it's just a temporary apparition that you can use until you can prove where it belongs. You know, don't just willy-nilly collect every record of in, in a place of everybody the same surname and the same Christian name, put them all together and say, this is him. Because more than likely, it's not him. And more than likely, you're creating more rabbit holes to go down than you can imagine. And you're creating brick walls for yourself because that person is not your person of interest. You want to not be a hatch match and dispatch person. You want to, when you build a cake, you build a cake in layers. So you want to build your cake in layers. You don't just want to go straight up and just stack, 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 stack. You want to take care of this layer and then take care of that layer and then take care of this layer. And then you can ice the whole thing. Think horizontally. Don't just think linearly. Especially when you're trying to extend the family, because the best way to extend a family is to look at the siblings, because the siblings will tell you things that you haven't been able to find yourself. Then there's the concept of conductor research using derivative materials as guides and pointers to original documents, then probing behind the creation of each document. I tried to teach you that all along. You want to know why a doc document was created. So let's be sure that we understand what the precursors and the successors are to the documents that we're looking for so that we can look for those precursors and look for those successors also. You also want to remember when we talked about a record, why that record was created. This is also important to your triangulation. And finally, you want to be sure that in your analysis and correlation, you are constantly, continually comparing, contrasting, and questioning the details that you've come across to make sure that you don't inadvertently attach a record to the wrong John Smith. The last thing you want to do is take the position of the more records I can find for this guy, the better off I'm going to be. Well, that's a very good position, but a better position is the more records I can find for this guy that actually apply to this guy, the better off I'm going to be. So this is Craig. This is Just Genealogy. And we finish now with the identity triangulation model. I think what we'll work on in a bit is the fan principle so that we can start applying it to kin and neighborhoods and associates and that kind of stuff so that we know how to actually do it. Don't forget that a lot of the information that came from this triangulation model is found in the Historical Biographical Guide to the Research Process. If you need more information, it's by Elizabeth Schoen Mills and I've used it with permission. Um, she said, of course. She said the same thing about the fan principle one too. So we'll have fun with that. There is on the back of this form a something called a reliability model. And I um, probably will talk about that too, uh, largely because it's this isn't how I look at it. Uh, I don't use these words reliability. I use credibility. Um, but these are dealing with all the things that we've talked about before. So maybe it isn't necessary to talk about it, just to, to remind you that on the back of this sheet is something called the reliability model. It deals with pro problem analysis. We dealt with that with research. We have dealt with that. Documentation, we've dealt with that. Record analysis, we've dealt with that. Correlation, we've dealt with that. Conflict resolution, we've dealt with that. And then explanation of evidence and conclusions, we've dealt with that. So I don't see that there's a problem here. So again, see you tomorrow.